It's not in my control. They uh they trying to get all the classrooms ventilated. Um, that's why I got the door open. It's cool outside. Hopefully, it's cool huh? Nah, from DC. First name and last name. What's up, what's up? What's going on? Do any of y'all have questions about this class before y'all start? No. Nah. Any questions about the class before we start? No. Nah.
All right, it's um it's eleven, but it's supposed to be a packed class, so I'm gonna give it like five more minutes and see who comes in. We can start. Um, I know it's a little hot, so I want to get y'all out as quickly as possible. Um, so that everybody sign in and get a wristband and get a a, a duck. <coughs> All right, so like I said, this is gonna be like a packed class. So Dr. Yang is advising like whoever can to move to the two o'clock section. It's the same class, but we need some students to kind of move there because it's a really small section and this is like a bigger section. They don't want like all the seats um, filled in the class. So if you can, um, these are the C CRN numbers to like add it to your schedule and you can drop this one. Um, or talk to Dr. Yang about it and he can do it for you. Professor Donnell, I'll be a professor for the semester teaching the intro to computer science class. Um, any questions before we start? Yes, sir. Uh, is this uh, Comp 1306? It is. It is? It is, yeah. Right. Any other questions? Cool. <clears throat> so, as a quick overview of how this lecture will go, every lecture will be a little different. Um, but we'll start with some intros. I'll introduce myself, and then I'll have you all kind of go around and introduce yourself, since there's so many people will probably do brief intros. Then we'll get into some course logistics, um, some housekeeping rules, and then we'll go into an activity, and then I'll give you um, your homework and what you need to do after the course. And we'll meet always in this room, same time, same place. So cool. Um, all right, like I said, I'm Professor Donnell. Um, 
I'm a recent grad at Hampton University. I went to HBC just like all of y'all. I majored in computer science, um, did a few internships at Google, went full time at Google for two years, and now I'm here teaching you all. Um, like you are in the Google in Residence program, I was once a Google in Residence student just like you. Um, then I did my internships, I went full time, and now I'm here teaching you. Um, the logo you see right here is linked to the wristband that you got, which is my scholarship foundation. Um, I started that when I got out of, out of college and basically that was my way of like giving back to students. So I really wanted to reach uh, black Latinx students and get them into computer science um, through mentorship um, and through scholarships. So I grant two annual scholarships and I mentor students to try to get them into Google or like whatever company they want to get into. Uh, also, a Dow High Ravens frame, you know, we lost last night. Um, yeah, I love the Ravens. Um, since I'm from the Washington, D.C. area, that's my team. Um, then I had a Nike Run Club app. Um, that's just something I like to do outside of work, just running um, and exercising. So what is Google in residence? Have you all heard like that term, like this is the Google class and anything about Google being linked to this class? <coughs> nah, all right. Um, so yeah, Google in residence um, is a program, like I said, where Googlers um, go teach. And essentially the idea is, as Googlers, we have like industry experience and we know what it takes to get into Google because we made it there. But we want like you are as freshmen and like CS students to know what, what it takes to get into a company like Google. So we come teach, we teach the like this class, but we teach it from an industry perspective. So you're not just getting test, textbook information, right? You're getting like the industry perspective. So like this class will be a mix of like the textbook and also like some things that I've learned um, in the field that I'm kind of like infusing into the course. Um, and so with me teaching, you will also have three uh, Google TAs who will be assisting you. Uh, with projects, labs, they will have virtual office hours. They're not here on campus, but um, they have virtual office hours for you to contact them and kind of get help like on your assignments. Any questions so far? <laughs> so these are your uh, Google TAs. I made sure to put 20% in there because they're still Google employees, like they're full-time engineers but they dedicated 20% of their time in their job to help me out with this course. So be sure to use them. Like part of your first homework assignment will be to set some office hours with them so you can get to know them and introduce yourself. Um, so yeah, take a picture of this slide if you can. Cool. All right, so I talked a little bit about like some of my interests and stuff, but I want to give you like who I was before college because I think like that's kind of the most important part about why I'm doing this program. So just kind of going down the list to give you like, I feel like y'all seeing the finished product, you see me here, you know I work at Google, but a few years before that, um, I came out of high school with, it was probably less than a 2.3, but I threw that up there. Um, came out of high school with an awful GPA I barely had an average SAT score. I got rejected by Hampton when I first applied. Like my mom told me to apply to this school. I was like, whatever, like I'll do it. Um, got rejected when I applied and um, had to do a summer program to actually get into Hampton. Um, and so with that, I had to go on campus for a few months and take some courses. And depending on my grades in those courses, they would let me into the school or they would deny me. Um, and so I took the course. I got an A and a B, I think, in the two classes I took and they finally let me into the school. And so after that, I pretty much was like dedicated to just being a good student and figuring out like how to be a good student. Um, so like many of you are like, does everybody know what you like want to major in? Like you kind of, okay. All right, so when I came out, I didn't know. Like when I was a freshman, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I didn't know like what I knew, what I was good at. So I was just like, I know how to use a laptop and a phone, so computers, I'm gonna do something with computers. Uh, but I had like no prior programming, programming or coding experience, so I was pretty much leaning on like all of my classmates to kind of get me through the classes. Um, but I had no experience. Does anybody in here have like coding experience already? Okay, so you have better than me. Um, cool. Any questions on any of that? No. All right. 
Who here can like relate with anything on the list? Yeah. All right, cool. Some of y'all didn't even <laughs> raise your hand. Y'all, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, boom. This is the last. I promise this is the last slide on me. Like after this is about shot. Um, so this kind of giving you like a breakdown of all the steps I took to get to where I'm at. Like I said, I'm from Washington, D.C. Um, ended up getting into acting at some point. And then while I was here, I was in this very place, but at Hampton University, getting taught by a Google engineer. Um, while I was there, I did hackathons. Anybody know what a hackathon is? Can you, uh, or do you mind like sharing what it is? Yeah, it's like a competition. Yeah. Like Yeah, so that's like one form of a hackathon. It could be, it's just anything in competition form around coding. So normally you'll have teams that like compete to build like the coolest project around a certain like topic. And then they'll do like demos and then there's like a panel that kind of rates the projects and like judges them. Um, but just doing a whole bunch of those like as a freshman and underclassman in general, I think gave me like the experience I needed as a as a freshman that kind of like want to jump out there and keep going with computer science. And so after that, I, um, do any of y'all have like plans to intern at Google or apply to Google? Like is that, be, okay, all right, good. So I, I applied to Google my freshman year uh, for, this, for the summer internship and I didn't get it. Um, but I felt like I was like a strong student at that point. So um, I ended up doing this Code U program, which was like a, free internship, it was unpaid, um, but it was still kind of like just a similar experience where you work during the summer. Uh, it was virtual, and you work with a team under a Google engineer and kind of like work on a software-based project. And so I did that. I got like my hands on, like learning how to code and using GitHub and stuff. Like we'll go into a lot of that stuff later in the semester. And I think that really prepared me for the internship the following summer. So. I ended up in, uh, interviewing again when I was a sophomore, and I got an offer, and so that's when I did the uh, 2019 internship in LA. Um, and so that was like a great experience and finally got me like into Google physically. And so by this, this point, like all my experiences were like Google related. So I was a GR student, then I did the Google Code U program, and now it's like a full-time intern. And so after my first internship, uh, pretty much just worked like super hard to get a return offer because I knew I didn't like interviewing. And so once I uh, did that, I got a return offer for the following summer. And after I did that one, I got a return offer to come full time like after I graduated college. And so I've been in New York working on the Google Home app for the last two years. And now I'm taking a break to come teach you. So now it's y'all's turn. Uh, we can like sneak around the room, I guess. Oh, you got a question? Who's that? <laughs> bro, you can look that up. <laughs> you can look that up, but it's six, yeah, six figures for sure. Interns make almost six figures, so. Um, huh? Right, you, you gonna be a class clown, huh? <laughs> um, but since it's so many students, we can do like the first bullet and then choose either the second or third. Like, you don't gotta do all of it. So we could probably snake, but whoever wanna stop, we'll just go. <laughs> Neither one of y'all, oh, you about it? Oh, okay. My name is Harold Joseph Stansberry III. I'm from Manville, Texas, just down up here in Houston. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not particularly excited nor anxious, but if I had to say something, I guess I'm looking forward to what this class has to offer. Uh, my name is Royce. I'm from the Dallas area, specifically DeSoto. I'm currently excited about, you know, getting into the computer science field, learning more, trying to get an internship, hopefully this summer. And I'm probably nervous about the assignments because I heard that, you know, it gets ramped up pretty fast, but I think I'm ready for it. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm from Sacramento, excited about is probably like the internship, like getting an internship, and then I'm not really nervous, I think just uh, just work. Um, my name is Cody, I'm from New Orleans. Uh, something I'm excited about is 
really just learning programming because this is my first time through all this. Uh, I'm not really nervous about nothing. Oh, can we, uh, <laughs> we just trying to go like this way and then boom, you and then come this way. So, um, yeah, y'all can go and then we'll go to the next room. But appreciate you back there, though. <laughs> excited to learn more about like computer science because actually like it's taking over the world so they trying to you know that wasn't my name. Julian, I'm a chem major, coding minor, and music minor here at Brady. I live in Houston. 
Houston, and I'm excited to learn whatever it is and um, share my experiences that I have with other people. My name is Nala. I was born in Maryland. I came from Dallas. Texas, and I'm really scared of nothing, but you know, I'm just excited to get it started. My name is Cage, I'm from Arkansas, and I'm, I'm excited about learning and increasing my knowledge. Appreciate y'all. Nice to meet everyone. Um, now I'm gonna go into like some of the course logistics and like what you can expect out of this course. But y'all back there laughing. Um, so this is the class website. You can find everything that's like from your syllabus on the class website. Feel free to pull it up on your phone, take a picture. So you can find all your TAs, you can find me on there. Uh, actually, let me just pull it up. So this is the home page. Week by week, you'll see like a, a breakdown of all the assignments that got assigned. Um, with the, so the lectures are recorded, I'll link videos, and then I'll link to the slides. Also your programming assignments. So y'all have lab tomorrow. Um, you'll see your lab on here, and you'll see the slides for the lab and then Thursday's lecture. Um, the schedule, this will be, since I have like multiple sections of this class, you'll see all the sections that I teach on here and then where you can find me in office hours since that's also part of your first homework assignment. Then you have the staff page. Um, of course you have me, so you can, so Mondays and Fridays, I don't have physical lectures. So if you need office hours on those days, you can schedule an appointment and it'll be a virtual office hours. Likewise for your TAs, um, you can book an appointment with, with any of them. And then you have a, a campus specialist who will be a Tuesday to, um, to speak to the class and you can find her. Um, she doesn't have office hours, but you can email her if you need to. And like I said, she'll be here on Tuesday to talk to you. Um, the syllabus section, this is pretty much just uh, a less formal explanation of what you already have on your syllabus um, on Canvas. And so this goes into like what you'll learn in the class, some of the policies, um, and a breakdown of how each of like the assignments and stuff will be graded, um, and how many of each type of assignment that you'll have in the class. Uh, let's see, and at the top, I linked to some of the resources. We haven't like covered any of them yet, really, I guess besides Canvas, uh, but I found your text. Does anybody have the textbook? He's about to ask that. Okay, yeah, so there is a textbook for the class. Is this, um, I don't know how much it is. They gave it to me, but there's an e-copy that I linked to on the website. It takes a while to load because it's a big book. Um, but if you don't feel like buying the book, I guess you don't have to. You can just kind of use the ebook, and it's the same thing. But the pages that I find, like for your readings, like I have the page numbers. I don't think the ebook has page numbers, so you'll kind of have to figure it out in a sense. Um, but yeah, this is the same book. Um, so yeah, I guess no real reason to purchase it necessarily unless you want a physical copy. For this class, we'll be using a platform called Edstem. I'll go into it a little bit later, but you also have uh, the link to Edstem uh, here on the website and then Python Tutor, which is like a, 
code visual visualization tool that we'll use like later in the semester to show you how code works line by line with like explanations. So these are like the primary tools. If we end up needing another tool, I'll add it. If we don't end up using some of these tools, I'll just take it off. And I think that's pretty much the whole website. Any questions on that? Cool, again, this is the link to it. Uh, if you haven't taken a picture, go ahead. What's up? So you're using Canvas, right? So Canvas is gonna be what I, I'm gonna use Canvas to upload like your grades. Um, and I guess make like announcements, but ASTEM is where everything else would be, like all your assignments, programming assignments, um, participation stuff, lecture slides, videos, all that will be on ASTEM. And I'm gonna go into that in a second. Now it's a website. All right, some of this is just as a formality, um, but yeah, respect, so just as a housekeeping rule, this is a learning environment. I want to remind everybody there's going to be people who know stuff and there's going to be people who may not necessarily understand cer certain concepts. So just give everybody grace, the grace that you want to have if you didn't understand something. Um, I'm going to respect your time and respect you, so I expect you to do the same. Um, and like I said, I'm here to teach you all and like give you pretty much everything that I have. So with that being said, like. I guess just don't make the job harder than it has to be, if you can. So these are some of the learning zones. Like, I found this recently, and basically this is just a breakdown of where you want to be in, like mentally in terms of the class. So I heard some people say like you were anxious about certain stuff. It's a lot of people say like you were comfortable, you felt like you would do well in the course, and that's good. Um, just want to kind of remind you like. There's times where you're going to be in a panic zone, which is when you don't understand anything, or you feel like you want to just zone out because you don't understand. And then there's going to be times where you're in the comfort zone, which is when the course is like a little too easy for you, and you also want to zone out and just kind of like don't want to pay attention. So if you're ever in one of those two zones, I want you to like call me out on it and let me know like what you need. Um, because I want mostly everybody to be in the learning zone for majority of the course, which is when you feel like there's still stuff you don't understand, but you feel comfortable enough to like want to keep learning and you feel engaged in the class. All right, cool. So problem solving protocol. This will be like what I want you to refer to when it's time to like actually do coding problems and you get stuck with something, right? There's like a protocol to follow to actually unblock yourself. The first step is to try something. Coding is one of those things where you can literally just load up an environment and like type in some code and press run and you can see what it does. The worst it's gonna do is just not run. So I want your first step to be to try some, like always try some. I'm gonna show you how to use ASTEM. In the ASTEM you can just write some code and press run and just see how it works. Second will be the research. Um, I'm sure we've all done this to some capacity. I'm just using Google to look up certain things. I don't want you to be copying and pasting it here because even if you get the answer, it's not gonna explain it for you, right? Like somebody had to get the answer to put it up there, so they had to understand it. So I want you to understand it too. Um, there is rubber duck, and that's why I passed out the ducks. I know y'all was probably like, why is he giving us ducks? Like, why do we need toys? Um, so ducks, in computer science, we use them, especially in industry, as like a way of saying, when you have a problem, articulate it. And so the concept with the duck is like, let's say you're writing some code and it just doesn't work, as expected, right? You wanna explain what you did to the duck, and then hopefully like somewhere down the line and you explain that what you did, you catch a mistake and have like an aha moment. Has anybody had like a, a moment like that, like you started explaining the problem and then you're like, oh, I got it. All right, so that's what Robert, that's why I underlined, like that's the main thing we use in computer science is like engineers, we explain our problems, not necessarily to the duck, like that's not, that's not the reason why I like put it up there. The real thing is just like, explaining your problems to somebody and then like hearing your own thoughts and realizing like, okay, that's where I messed up at. Um, and fourth and fifth, of course, you can ask a neighbor, like this is a family, whether you like see it as that or not. So like feel free to lean on your neighbor at any time um, and ask a question to your neighbor. And of course, I'm here to instruct you so you can ask me any questions you have. Any questions or any of that? Cool. Participation, um, 
So to make this class like engaging, like there are a bunch of opportunities to participate and it's also like 5% of your grade. Um, so it's mandatory to be here. Um, when you feel like you can participate or you feel like you have something to offer to your classmates, I want you to feel free to like speak up. Um, you don't have to necessarily raise your hand, like anything you need to say, use the whiteboards, like feel free to do so. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on ASTEM, like I said, for you to kind of engage with and I'll go into like the website a little later, but there will be like discussions and like chat features and stuff that we'll use throughout the semester. I'm good. Um, for you to kind of engage with the class outside the class. And of course, like I said, we have office hours. My TAs have office hours and then I have personal office hours. What's up? What time is your class on? Uh, 12.30. 12.30. 12.20. 12.20. Uh, so yeah, office hours, make sure you're using the office hours and if y'all like form a group chat or whatever, participate in it. And, like don't just be the one like reading all the stuff in it, like participate. So as a grade and breakdown in this class, the only two exams you'll have is a midterm and a final. There's no other exams. This, is, this course is mainly to get you interested in computer science, get you to believe and give you the confidence to like go to CS2 or whatever else you want to do in computer science. You'll have one project, um, and the idea behind that one is to work on it throughout the semester. It's not given at the end, and you kind of just have a few weeks to work on it. You'll have checkpoints throughout the semester um, to check in with your TAs to make sure you're doing it correctly so that you don't just get like a failing grade at the end because there were no checkpoints like throughout. You have a bunch of homeworks and labs. I think about 14 homework assignments, so one each week. And then labs, you don't have one on midterms and finals week, so there's only about 12. And that's tentative, so it could fluctuate. Uh, I already mentioned participation and then quizzes. We have five, so every other week, minus midterms and minus finals week and then your lowest one gets dropped. <clears throat> and I'm gonna link to these slides, but your syllabi will be attached. So like, whether you, I think this section two, so the syllabus will be in section two, and then the next section I have will be um, from the other link. All right, so slip days. So this is something <laughs> I added in to basically give you all kind of a cushion because I know it is kind of like a scary class. It's computer science and it's your intro class. So you'll have three opportunities to kind of inform me when you need extra time on an assignment. It can only be used for a homework or the project check-ins. And so basically, if you inform me, I want to use a slip day, I'll give you 24 hours as an extension to submit whatever the assignment is. And no, you can't use more than one slip day on the same assignment. Any questions about that? Cool. All right, did you get it? Okay. Oh, all right. So this is your project. Um, no need to kind of like worry about it now, but you apply a bunch of the stuff you learned in this class to the project. Has anybody heard of Wordle before? Okay, well I didn't before like developing a project, but um, the idea is that you'll build Wordle or a simple form uh, using all the concepts you learned in this class. So it'll be given out uh, during the week of September 11th, I don't know exactly what day, and it'll be your only project. And it'll consist of two major checkpoints um, in October, and that's when you'll meet with your TAs to make sure you develop the correct plan for the project and that you have like the right ideas in mind to successfully complete it. Um, I'll put that twice. Uh, and then, <laughs> It'll be due uh, close to the end of the <coughs> semester, around November 27th. Oh no, you don't have to use those. So your homework and stuff will be on ASTEM, and so you can access that on that on that desktop or on the laptop. Okay. Is this you, laptop? you said what is it called? ASTEM ED STEM. A ED STEM. Yeah, and I'm a. No, what's up? How do we access them? I'm about to I'm about to do like a whole breakdown of like how to how y'all sign up and then how I can like what you see when you get in and and all of that. Any other questions? Is it project by yourself? Is it by yourself? By myself? Like by yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. So projects are individual, yeah, yeah. It's individual projects. But like you'll have a whole bunch of opportunities to work with students, especially on labs, like 
labs, you can feel free to collaborate. Um, but the project, yeah, it is you applying what you learn to the project. If we had, since they're like, since it's one project, if everybody was able to like work together, we, I would get one big project. Like everybody would just, you know. Um, the lab class is tomorrow. Are you looking forward as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of, um, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, but now I don't think he's teaching this class, like Comp 1336 at all. I think it's uh, Ms. Daniels, and then I'm teaching the other two sections. Um, yeah, please don't do it. Um, I feel like I'm chill enough. If you ever have questions about anything, I need an extension, my dog ate my homework, just come to me. Like, don't feel like. You such on a time crunch that you gotta chat GPT or cheat like ASTEM has plagiarism uh, checkers to see like how similar code is. So don't, I wouldn't advise you to try it. Like it's gonna flag it. Um, I want you to collaborate all the time, but like there's a difference between collaboration and cheating. Um, copying and pasting, staring at somebody's code, just like copying it, like all of it. It's classified the same way. But feel free to collaborate and like bounce ideas off each other. That's how it goes in the workplace. So that's what I want to emulate here. But be sure to like, if you ever have a question about is this cheating, like just ask me. And again, ChatGPT is like this new thing that everybody wants to use, especially in the classroom. But don't like, even if you choose to use it, don't let it be your only resource, right? Because you don't want to be like getting all your information from one source. Um, as it could definitely mislead you and it could definitely like misunderstand what the assignment was in the first place and you just turn in something that has nothing to do with what I assigned. Any questions about any of that? We done with like course logistics, so any questions or anything? What's up? What about uh, Blackbox? What about Blackbox? Yeah, it's a, it's a code. It seems like it's um, What does it do? Sir, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it because um, you like the point of this class is to teach you how to write code. So if you're using black box, black, black box wrote the code. Any other questions? Uh, C++. And Python or Ruby? To my knowledge, it's only C++. Um, I haven't been told anything other than that, so. What did you do? Like, what is, um... Uh, in terms of languages? Yeah. So in college, I learned Java. And internships at Google, I use pretty much everything. Um, the first one was Dart. I don't know if you heard of that. It's a Google language. Um, I use Java in that internship, too. My second internship, I use C++, MATLAB, Python, and full time I use Java and Kotlin because I'm an Android <coughs> based developer. Um, so I literally learned C++ to teach it to y'all. Like, I never learned that in school. I never really used it in the internship. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of new to C++ in a way, um, but like a lot of the concepts are the same. So. Mm -hmm. Do they teach you like why you on the internship? How to, How to use it? Um, good question. Did, did everybody hear his question? I said, um, I got your Arabic. So he asked me when an internship expected me to use a new tool. Did they teach me the tool? Basically, like, what's the expectation? And so, yeah, they give you time to kind of like ramp up on it, and it's like depending on what it is, Google may have. X number of like internal resources to like go learn it. Like it may be a training, it may not be. Um, so you kind of just have to balance between online resources and then human resources. So like if I'm a Dart developer and you are on my team as an intern, I would expect you to come <laughs> to me for all your questions because I know there's not that much documentation and like support for how to learn how to use it. So you need to know like when to bother people 
and like when to kind of do independent research. And that's something like we'll learn in the class, like when is the right time to say I need help type thing. Did I answer that? Did I answer it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Uh, so he asks, is it easy to get kicked out of computer science because like new stuff and like innovative technologies are, are like always introduced? Uh, I say no, but it is kind of like an expectation for you to learn about what's going on and like stay, you know, up to date on stuff. But what you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to stay in the loop for real. Um, and that goes with anything, like you just always gotta be up to speed and make sure like when new, te new technologies come out, like you know how to use it and you know how it applies to your job. So like in my job, while I was getting ready to leave, there was like an effort to get us to learn some new coding thing. And cause I left, I didn't have to, but it's like there was a new expectation, like okay, this new thing is kind of going on, you need to learn how to use it. So like that happens from time to time. It just really depends on how it affects your team and your workflow. Wait, you went to go like the Google thing, you turned off the... Oh, I didn't leave, like I'm still a, like I still work there. This program is a Google program. So I'm on temporary leave. So after this semester, I go back to my job. Okay. I meant to say that in my fault. Um, but so I'm gonna get you in the evening. Uh, do they teach you anything about AI? Like in my specific role? Yeah. Nah, um, the closest thing, have you heard of Bard? No. It's like, chat, it's Google's version of ChatGPT. Um, I had to use that for a little bit, like while we were like, we were training it basically. All the employees were like asking it questions so Bard could get an internal like round of uses, right? Like before we just develop it and like throw it out there to the public, like let's, let's let Googlers use it. That's the only AI stuff I really did in my job. Um, in undergrad, I did a bunch of like research um, in AI with professors, but full time, nah, I don't really like AI that much to really like. If my job was around it, I probably would find another team or something because I'm not the biggest on AI. Uh, um, I check on that for you. I'm a uh, like super new to this school, so I don't really know like what infrastructure I really have for students. Um, but I'll figure it out. You you have TAs though who are like more than qualified to like help you with whatever you need. And if they their office hours don't meet what you need, like I'll get on them about opening up some more. So there was a question over there, or you you good? Oh, okay. Wait, can you make appointments for the office hours? Yeah, let me uh, show you. So. So, boom, let's say you want to meet with Charles, right? And actually, Charles interned with me in 2019. That's how I met him. Um, and he works at Google now, so that's why we like, he one of my TAs. He know me for real. So, boom, you click the link, and you can like just, whatever time works for you, you just click the time. It'll auto-fill with some of the information on it. And then once you click book, it'll go to your Google Calendar. And so, I think it's all right. Once you go to your calendar, like don't mind all of that stuff. It'll just automatically go on there. And so when you click it, it'll have like a join with Google Meet link. And that's like Zoom. So you, it'll be like a video conferencing thing on there. And then y'all talk. You need more time, just book some more time or like just find another appointment. Um, any other questions? So now for an activity, and this kind of like our segue into computer science <laughs> softly. So I want y'all in groups of, I don't know how many, it's probably like 30, do like groups of, boom, do the like groups of whatever that is for your section. Um, and I want you to like share, what basically what it says, share your name, interest, 
And now I want you to write steps. Somebody serve as describing write steps on how you would make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. It could be on the paper, it can be on the computer. Somebody just recorded somewhere. So I give y'all like five minutes. <coughs> Yeah, what's up? Yeah, 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 that's yours. Oh, for real? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, you got you, you got you on, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, you know what it is? Don't spoil it, bruh. Don't spoil it. But nah, yeah, 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 work on it with him. But like, don't sell with the wild
Did y'all uh, write down them steps? No, Bro, it's just a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Why? <laughs> How many steps you need? <laughs> um, the, we kind of low on time, so if you don't got the steps all the way, just <laughs> boom. Not to, I mean, yeah, for the class, but I want to give y'all time to like get y'all homework situated and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not about to extend it to the entire. All right, next part of this activity, I want, so all of y'all should have gotten a chance to like hear your group's instructions or like you have it written down somewhere. I want somebody to like tell me what's wrong with my instructions. These are my instructions. Somebody tell me what's wrong. What's up? Just not detailed enough. Okay. Anything else? You're missing a knife. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> you didn't get a knife. <laughs> 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 nah, I got the knife. I got the knife right there. No cross Oh, I need two knives. <laughs> I mean, they about to touch anyway. <laughs> huh? Okay, yeah, he said I could wipe the knife off. Okay. <laughs> All right, anything else? You're missing a plate. I don't, you know, what if I don't care about this? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I need a more stuff, more stuff to set up. Any other questions or points to make? You can say how you apply the peanut butter or the jelly onto the bread. Okay. Yeah. Branching off of her point, like it's not detailed, and that's the whole point of this was to get you to understand like how things work with computers, right? It's not going to ever do anything you don't tell it to do. So, going back to my instructions, right? I said get all of this stuff and then I said put the peanut butter on one slice that could literally mean put the jar of peanut butter on the slice but you as humans you understand like what I meant but a computer is not going to understand it so you have to be very like implicit in terms of your instructions for the computer or it's not going to do what you wanted to do so looping back to the rubber ducking thing like if your code ever doesn't do what you expected to do it's most likely because you didn't <laughs> tell the computer to do that So it's a little, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but this kind of like a. You're not even making any sense. Sorry, you ruined it on purpose. He... You know what? I'm hungry. I could really go for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. Do you guys think you can write down some instructions and teach me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah. And I'm done. Step one: get two pieces of bread out. Got them. Get a butter knife and get some PB. Take one piece of bread. Spread it around with the butter knife. No, Dad, with the peanut butter. I'm just doing what it says. It says, take one piece of bread, spread it around with the, bu with the butter knife. Hold on. Get some jelly, rub it on the other half of the bread. No, Dad, open the jelly. Well, it doesn't say to do that. Put the breads together on top of each other. Take a big bite. <laughs> not gonna play, like, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but the idea, like I said, is that the computer is never going to do anything you didn't tell it to do. So even if you understand it and make sense in your mind, check that against what the code says. And if it's like not the same, then most likely you need some more instructions in your code to get it to do what you want it to do. Any questions on the activity or like the theory behind that? Um, boom, so some terms you'll need to know for the class. I've already been using TA a lot. I'm, I assume that y'all know what it meant since nobody said, what is a TA? But it's essentially just your teaching assistant. Um, so they're familiar with the content in this course, and so they'll be able to help you with like pretty much anything. And since you won't have any TAs, like student TAs as far as I know, so all your Google TAs are like, like I said, more than qualified to help. Um, and they should have the answers that you need or know where the resources are to get you uh, answers to your questions. 
Um, bugs are just errors in your code. So like I said, if your code doesn't work, we call that a bug at work. There's different types, but essentially if it doesn't do what you want it to do, then it's a bug. Debug just means get rid of the bug that exists. Um, and so that's the whole process normally. It means to step through your code line by line and figure out, you know, also by using the rubber duck to figure out where is the bug in my code and like how can I fix it. Um, compile and run, these will be terms that will be used um, together. Compile just means take this code, so people threw around the word Python, that's another coding language. In this class we'll use C++ and it basically means take that code that I just wrote and convert it into something that the computer can understand, which is a bunch, all those zeros and ones and stuff you've probably seen in like the movies or whatever. That's what the computer needs. Um, and so running the code is what actually does that. It actually like uses the zeros and ones to do something. So the machine has what it needs, which is the zeros and ones or binary code. And then it'll do what it needs to do in the background and then like print whatever to the screen or launch the app or whatever is like really happening. Um, the last one is syntax. And that's pretty, mu pretty much just the uh, rules for the language. Um, so just like you have like English language and you know verbs come at this place in a sentence, like there's a structure for it. Same thing applies to languages like C++ and Python where you can't just freestyle it. Like it has to be in a certain order in order for the program to like understand what you just wrote. So if you didn't take a picture of this, you probably want to take a picture. I don't know if this slide will come back up, but we'll definitely like use the terms a lot. What's up? What program do I use the most? Like language um, at work? Uh, we use Kotlin the most. That's a Google language. Um, and we use that. It's just like Java, if you've heard of Java. But it's, like I said, it's Google's language. So Google likes to use a lot of proprietary stuff and because we develop it. So like we can add new features to it whenever we want. Um, and kind of suit it to meet our needs. And so it's the same thing as Java, but it's on the newer side, like newer features get added to it more frequently than like Java. What's up? So like, when you say like compiler, what's the difference between that and just like running code? Yeah, so for example, <laughs> some languages do it all in one step. Certain languages, it happens in two steps, compile first and then run. So compile is that conversion from what you just wrote, like a C++ file. It'll take that and it'll turn it into machine code. It'll do that in the background. Normally, like your computer will literally create a new file with just zeros and ones or a bunch of like serialized data, like stuff you can't understand. It's not hum human readable. Um, and then running it is where your machine will take that file that just got created and process it and like do whatever. It's like you can't read the compiled code. All you can read is the code you wrote. But the machine needs like that file in the middle to actually like run the program. And so it would like convert the compiled code on its own and then from there. Mm -hmm. And so when you compile, that's when you'll see if there's a bug or not. Because um, all your errors will come up when you try to compile. By the time you run it, there should there will be no errors because it won't even compile if there are errors, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I can like, in a future lecture, draw a diagram of, okay, you start here with your code that you wrote, <laughs> then it gets compiled, then it gets ran. I think I have a slide somewhere in here for that actually. Uh, boom, yes. I just wanna show. So, I don't want to like kind of overwhelm you because we're going to go into this in the lab too. Um, but like I said, you have your different languages. This is the code that you will write, right? Like some of this probably looks, this looks human readable. You would take this, you would compile it, which was with whatever like language you're using. So we're using C++ and then it'll convert that into a bunch of zeros and ones. And so those zeros and ones is what your computer needs to actually like launch the app or whatever like this code is actually doing, it needs the zeros and ones to do it. That makes sense to everybody? Cool. Um, so that is it for, huh? go back to it, oh yeah. yeah.
and just making a note of this at the bottom, all of these compilers would end up converting these, even though know, these are different languages, once they all get compiled, they'll get compiled to the same exact sequence of zeros and ones. So no matter which compiler, it'll always get converted because these are, the idea is like they're all doing the same thing, so this should be the same thing. Oh, my fault. Uh, all right, boy. Um, so, yeah, we only have 20 minutes, so I'm about to just show y'all the homework and then get y'all out of here. So, before I give you your homework, actually, if you don't finish this right now, then you have to do this part as homework, but this is what Google needs um, to understand, like, I guess what your future plans are. So try to do this now. I give y'all like 10 minutes to do it now. Uh, it's a short form. I don't think it's anything free response. I think it's just uh, clicking buttons. And this, I think, will give us like your contact information to make sure like you have access to the resume stuff, interviews, internship related content. <coughs> So at 12 or close to 12, 10, I'll uh, just show the homework and like a little bit of ASTEM and then uh, get you out of here. Am I good to show the homework slide? Like, why y'all do that? So I'm like, kind of, mm -hmm. all right. And so you can also take a picture of this one, uh, like, while you kind of doing that. So we got, we like, uh, efficient with the time. What's up? Uh, these, this, so this, this whole thing is going to go on YouTube and the physical slide deck, I'm a, put it in drive and be able to share it with everybody. Did anybody finish the uh, thing from the last slide yet? Like, how, oh, okay. All right. I'm about to show ASTEM for a second, and then I'm going to come back to this and leave this up so you can take a picture before you leave. Um, like I said, if you don't finish that enrollment form, it becomes homework for you. Um, and the link will be down here, but I do want to make sure I show is them. So let me see. I got like a little burner account. All right. So this is what you'll see when you sign up for is them. And the link I think was on here. So yeah, uh, bit.ly slash comp 1336 should take you to is them. Uh, it don't look like a lot of y'all have laptops up, but when you get home or when you get out of class and get to your machine, um, this is how you'll join. It should put you right in the course. Once you get in there, you should see something that looks like this. And so this will put you in the course. Like I said, you have homework, um, and all your homework will be in the lessons tab. So up here in the right, that's lessons, and there you see homework 
zero and lab zero. Don't worry about this till it gets assigned tomorrow. But this is your first homework assignment. Like all the assignments will be in here. So see the first assignment, first part of homework zero is to introduce yourself. So it's just some questions <coughs> to help me get to know you all. And then a little like, I don't know, a little funny thing, just kind of like draw something on it. Um, join me at office hours. So I said I have physical and virtual office hours, but this is for physical office hours from Tuesday to Thursday. Just come by my office and like, just so I can get to kind of know y'all um, by name and not just y'all. Um, and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. It doesn't have to be long, but I want you to know where my office is and feel comfortable enough coming in my office at like whatever time I'm there to ask your questions. Um, if you're ever curious about my office hours, like I said, we have the course website, comp1336 slash schedule, and that'll show you the three blocks uh, from Tuesday to Thursday. And then join the Google TA at office hours. So same thing, uh, just set up an appointment with any of the TAs and just kind of talk to them to introduce yourself. Um, let them know if you need help with something. Let them know like anything. Um, and then once you have that, I'll get your name from them. And I'll know, of course, when you come to my office hours, because it's my office hours. And that's it for the first homework assignment. Um, as far as how to code and all of that stuff, as it pertains to ISTEM, we'll see that tomorrow in the lab. But essentially, it's like the same concept. You'll have your labs that pop up here and you'll be able to kind of like write code and all of that stuff in the tool. So you don't have to download anything. Everything is already in ASTEM to make it like super easy. Questions? Who said? Oh, what's up? The link ain't working. Huh? The link ain't working. Uh, anybody else having that problem too? <coughs> Maybe I didn't. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Try this right here directly. <clears throat> if that doesn't work, I could take all the uh, like all of y'all's emails and just invite you to the course. Um, if that still doesn't work, but it should. Mm -hmm. And then there's <laughs> the first thing on there was answering that like survey of questions. It should take like, and then I drew the little thing on there at the end. That's like the first part. You could go that it don't matter what order, um, but it's three parts to homework zero. And if you didn't finish the enrollment part, enrollment form, that becomes part of your homework too. Is this link working? Nah. What does it do? Like something is working, like try the bit.ly link and try this link. Like, if y'all didn't take a picture already, take a picture of this one and the bit.ly link. But this is part of your homework to sign up. I know how many students is, are in the class, I'll compare that with how many I see in ISTEM and then go based off of that. But all your homework, like, you'll need this for tomorrow for your lab for sure. What's up? Nah, you just walk in. Just walking. Starting today, like I'll be in my office after I do my next after I do my next lecture, I'll be there. So <laughs> homework zero, yeah. You have assignments for like for office hours, yeah. Mm. Any other questions? <laughs> Anybody else see that? I don't know. You did it on your phone?
the like first three letters of the Let me see if I can see y'all loaded into the class. <coughs> oh, so it look like, yeah, a lot of y'all are in here. Uh, yeah, I don't see your email in here, so uh, let me see. Um, maybe try it on like a different machine when you have time. If it still doesn't work, email me and I'll figure it out. Um, but make sure you try it like today because you're going to need it for a lab tomorrow. And before y'all go, anybody had like a general question, like anything that I talked about at all this uh, lecture? What's up? Um, what would be the best computer? The best computer? I love Mac. I don't know about the Mac, but I love Mac. I mean, I like Mac, but I'm saying you like the only thing that I like. I mean, for for this class, everything will be in ASTM, so like, it's yeah, it's not machine based. It's just ASTM or ASTM or whatever machine. Okay, so I can use that one for someone else. Yeah, you can use any laptop. Let me hold up. Give me one second. You had a question right? Pretty good. No, I said what's called the reason you like Mac MacBooks because iPhones and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like MacBooks just kind of more sleek, like it's a. You hit refresh sleep on it. Then. You see you. Also, this is where we supposed to see this one thing with presentation. And click the. Click this little thing right there and see if you see homework zero and lab zero. You set, yeah. Uh, you see yourself? You see yourself? Nah? Uh, oh, you do? All right. Any other questions? Yeah, you can. It's, um, my office hours start at, because I got another lecture after this. Um, or if you really want to do it, like, so these are my office hours, 3.30 to 5. If you really want to do it after this, you could. Like, I really don't care. Anybody else, like, have a preference? Like, you want to get out of the way after this class? It can't be, like, a whole group, because I can't talk to all y'all. But you ask first. You ask. Uh, I'll take one more. I think it was you. So I'm going to get y'all three. Everybody else, I got office hours, like, because I need to eat. Uh, Wait, you staying here for the 12.30? I teach again at two o'clock, and then I have my office hours like right after that until I go home. From three thirty to five today. So that's my official office hours, but I take y'all three um, since y'all. So we come here at three thirty. Nah, not here. It's in my office. So that's uh, three thirteen. Yeah. Oh, for real? okay. Uh. Again, I say I will lead this up. So yeah, make sure you know what the homework is. They do have due dates and they are graded. So make sure you have that. I'll leave that up. Um, if you don't have any other questions, you're free to go. If you have questions, you could, you know where I'm at. And then the three that's coming to my office hours, y'all can walk with me like when I leave.